Whether you believe it or not, whether you're ready or not, fantasy playoffs are officially here and it's time to get our lineups right because they matter now more than ever. And that's what we're here to do today on the newest episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas podcast. As you can tell, a little bit of a different episode today. It's not Lucas's voice hosting and it's not Cameron's voice hosting. It is the third fella, Tyler Plath, with you today, taking you through all of the week 15 matchups, discussing starts and sits, because again, it is fantasy playoffs. It matters now more than ever, so we need to get these right, and so we will break down each matchup and let you know who we think should be started, who should be sat, who are those fringe players that you need to be aware of this week. Before I get going... Shout out to all of you watching on YouTube. Shout out to all of you listening on the audio version on our Spotify and Apple podcast. Shout out to all of you tuning in today. Make sure you're subscribed. This is the most important time of the year to get your fantasy football lineups, your fantasy football strategies in line. And you can find that all on the fantasy football fellas channel on YouTube, Spotify, and really anywhere on our social medias too, on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find us anywhere and everywhere for the best advice around as we go into fantasy playoffs. And like I said, throughout the intro, we are breaking down every matchup in week 15, discussing the starts and sits. So let's not waste any more time and let's get on into it. All right, try not. We're going to try to not go super long on this episode because it is just one of us. So maybe there's not as much banter in this episode, but I will try my darndest. I will try my best to make this as entertaining and as useful as possible. And so we'll begin with Thursday night football, the beat up L.A. Chargers going up against the Las Vegas Raiders. Really? Is there any obvious start? It's maybe Austin Eckler and Austin Eckler doesn't really even feel like that obvious of a start anymore just because of how the season has gone. But he is an obvious start just because of the situation in Los Angeles right now. So then we need to look at Vegas. I should say this before we get to Vegas. I don't really like any other Chargers player this week. No Keenan Allen, no Justin Herbert. Josh Palmer is back. I don't remember off the top of my head if he's activated. So excuse me while I double check that. But Gerald Everett, why should he do anything this week with Easton Stick? Uh, Quentin Johnston, other the other wide receiver, I don't feel great about him this week. Again, it's Easton Stick, which maybe is a is unfair to Easton Stick, but. I just, I, it's more so on Quentin Johnston because he's unproven. Quentin John, or excuse me, Josh Palmer was activated off IR and uh, he will be active in this game. But I, again, I don't feel great about him either. So we need to look over to Vegas then. Josh Jacobs is doubtful for this game, at least at one o'clock in the afternoon, central time, time of recording. He is doubtful for this game. So there's no, Raiders running back that I feel great about. And it looks like it's going to be Aiden O'Connell. There was some discussion as to who would be the starter for Vegas. Would it be Jimmy Garoppolo? Would it be Brian Hoyer? Or would it still be Aiden O'Connell? And it leans and it looks like to be Aiden O'Connell in this one. But no Josh Jacobs. So is there an over-reliance on the passing game in, in, in this one for Vegas? And I feel like I feel like there will be because it kind of has to be. So that gives some intrigue for Devonte Adams, but he is dealing with an illness of some sort. So temper expectations for Devonte. I, there's really no good way to look at this game and feel comfortable with any of these players, maybe besides Austin Eckler, but that's not, like I said at the top, it's not as obvious as it used to be. It's, it's not as, it doesn't feel as good and solid and secure as we've, felt in the past with Austin Eckler. So again, Austin Eckler, you're starting 
Devontae Adams, you're probably starting, but we're tempering expectations. Jacoby Myers maybe is a low end flex because, again, an over reliance on the passing game for Vegas. That's really about it. This is not a great game if you're depending on any of these Vegas players, especially Josh Jacobs or a Keenan Allen. But that's where we're at right now in the season. That does it for the Thursday game. And now we're going to go on to our Saturday games. This is the first week where we've got some Saturday games. We've got three of them back to back to back. And we're going to start with Minnesota taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Our obvious starts in this game. Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson. Now, the big news for Minnesota is that Nick Mullins is starting this game. So there is some intrigue for a just for Justin Jefferson right as Nick Mullins is just the better pocket passer than Josh Dobbs so there's some intrigue there for him but we need to discuss the wide receiver twos for both teams Jordan Addison and T Higgins what do we do with those guys this week and in my opinion we're sitting those guys this week let's look at T Higgins first there's just not enough volume going around Cincinnati, at least for him to be a play in your starting line in your fantasy lineups. He's only had seven targets the past two games. Again, there's just not enough for him to there's not enough of the ball going his way to make me feel great about starting him. And then for Jordan Addison, like I said, with Nick Mullins, there's some hope because, again, the pocket passer. But I need to see it first. I need to see it with Jordan Addison first over the last four weeks. I believe it is with Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins. Jordan Addison is the wide receiver 48. So that is out of starting territory. I mean, we look at top 36 wide receivers, probably right. Your one through your one through 12 are your wide receiver ones. Your 13 through 24 are your wide receiver twos. Your 25 through 36 are your wide receiver threes and your flex players, right? Wide receiver 48 is wide receiver four territory, and you're not starting four wide receivers unless you are starting or you have two flex spots, three wide receiver spots in a flex, something like that. But if you are starting two wide receivers in a flex, there's no you should not be starting Jordan Addison at that point just because of how it's been lately for him. And the other the other position group that we need to talk about are these Vikings running backs it's self-explanatory at this point. We really don't need to talk about them, but they need some kind of spotlight in this episode because, again, it, it, you can't just not talk about them, right? Some people have banked on Alexander Madison bouncing back. Maybe you moved on from him, but if you are still rostering Alexander Madison, I will say this is not. this should not be the week to play him. Madison, he's averaging just six and a half fantasy points in his last four games. That <laughs> you can't play him in fantasy playoffs at this point. Ty Chandler, in my opinion, is the better play compared to Alexander Madison, but I just don't trust him this week. I this Vikings running game, you cannot bank on, cannot rely on. So both Vikings running backs are on your bench. Jordan Addison, T. Higgins are on your bench. Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson are starting no matter what. Second Saturday game now, the afternoon game. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Your only obvious start in this game is Michael Pittman. He has been just a target reception machine this year. There, it, That's all that needs to be said about him. Let's talk about Zach Moss. And I think Zach Moss is a great start this week. And it, it's really a volume play. That's really what it is. He had 19 carries in week 13, his first game without Jonathan Taylor. And then in week 14, he only had 13 carries, but he had eight targets. We had a stat a couple episodes ago, I believe, that uh, Zach Moss averages almost like 18, 19, 20 touches a game without Jonathan Taylor. Pittsburgh has been better against the run, but like I said, this is just a volume thing. He's going to get touches. I feel better about that than I do with a guy like Alexander Madison or Ty Chandler who needs to find the end zone, something along those lines. Now for the Steelers. We are definitely not starting at either of their quarterbacks. I know Kenny Pickett isn't playing, so it's Mitch Trubisky. We're not playing him. So we look at these running backs. 
Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. Both have not been doing too hot lately. Najee is averaging almost nine fantasy points since putting up 16 in week 12. And Jalen Warren has averaged only seven fantasy points since Matt Canada got fired. The thing is with this matchup, though, against the Colts, it's a plus matchup. Indy is allowing the second most fantasy points per game at two running backs the last four weeks. It's a plus matchup. So because of that, if you're going to start one, I'd say it's Najee because he's the lead back. Now he's getting over 50% of the rushing attempts. Jalen Warren is averaging just around 30, 35% of those rushing attempts. Najee is the lead back. So if you're going to start a Steelers running back, it's Najee. And Najee's probably that low end running back two this week. Maybe his his ceiling then is a mid running back two. But Najee Harris is then the starter. And Jalen Warren is not is not the same Jalen Warren that we had gotten used to through the first nine, 10 weeks of the season. Now we look at the pass catchers, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Pat Fryermuth. I and I just don't have much interest in any three of and any one of those guys. Deontay Johnson has no more than four catches in each of his last five games. And he's been getting bailed out by two touchdowns in his last two games. So there's not much there's not much for him to you know produce on for fantasy points. George Pickens isn't worth considering at this point. He's averaging just eight fantasy points per game in his last seven games. He's not even in, he should not, like I said, he's not even in consideration for your for any starting lineup, in my opinion, at least. And Pat Fryermuth, he's come back down to earth a little bit after his tight end one finish. He's finished outside the top 20 in back-to-back games. So, like I said, I don't have much interest in either one or any of the three Steelers pass catchers this week. Um, and so again. Najee Harris is really the only one I'm interested in, and it just feels gross because you know what Najee Harris has been so far this year. Let's move on to the last Saturday game. The Denver Broncos traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. Our obvious starts, David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta. The main guys from the Lions. Let's look at the Broncos, though. And this really comes down to two players. It's Cortland Sutton and it's Javante Williams. So what are we doing with these guys? Let's start with Javante Williams. In my opinion, I'm sitting him this week. What you've been getting lately from Javante Williams is three receptions and somewhere between 50 and 60 rushing yards in a game. That's eight or nine fantasy points, but a touchdown would make it a worthwhile week. So. The question is, does he score? Does he find the end zone? And we have been asking that question pretty much, again, the last three weeks, I believe it is. And he's found the end zone once. And that was his first time scoring since 2021. I believe that was the stat. Maybe it was 2022, but I just lean on the side of no. I I, I don't want to bank on this Denver offense getting Javante Williams a rushing touchdown. That I don't feel great about, but I do feel a little bit better about Cortland Sutton. Detroit is allowing the seventh most fantasy points per game to wideouts over the last four weeks. And Sutton lines up out wide 81% of the time. He's similar to Javante Williams in that you're banking on a touchdown because Cortland Sutton has no more than four receptions in each of his last four games, but he's getting at least 60 yards in each of those games. So we're looking at a floor of, I don't know, eight fantasy points could be up to 10 fantasy points, right? Let's say two catches, 60 yards, eight points, four catches, 60 yards, 10 points. If he scores, it's 16. So again, we asked that question about Javante. And now the question is also true for Coral and Sutton. Do you know, can we count on him scoring? And I think with this matchup against Detroit and how well, I should say, how poorly they have been against wide receivers the last four weeks. Oh, why not? I I, I feel much better about Cortland Sutton than I do about Javante Williams if I had to choose a Broncos player for my lineup. 
Alrighty, we're on to our Sunday slate of games, starting with the Giants taking on the Saints. This one I'm going to spend very little time on. Um, you're starting Saquon, but you're not feeling great about Saquon. You're starting Alvin Kamara, absolutely, and you're starting Chris Olave. That's it. <laughs> no, you're, I'm not starting any Giants pass catcher. I'm not starting Tommy DeVito. I'm not starting. I'm not starting Derek Carr. Yeah, that's that's it. That is as straightforward as it can get. So we'll move on to the next Sunday matchup with Chicago taking on Cleveland. Our, our obvious starts: DJ Moore and David Njoku, who I has kind of flown under the radar this year, in my opinion, in terms of just consistent performances. Like David Njoku has been on an absolute tear this year. And if I don't, if I remember correctly, over the last six weeks, he's the tight end two overall. Like in, in in for a position like the tight end where your options are pretty limited and there's only a few good tight ends out there. Like, yeah, David Njoku is an obvious start for me. But let's look at the Chicago Bears and the rest of the Chicago Bears, I should say, besides DJ Moore. Starting with Justin Fields. This one feels like it's a bad matchup, but I'm not exactly sure it is that bad of a matchup for Justin Fields. Cleveland over the last four weeks has been middle of the pack in fantasy points allowed. So that gives me some kind of optimism for Justin Fields. But what makes me believe in Justin Fields this week, and I'll just kind of spoil it, I think you should start Justin Fields this week, is that over the last three games, Fields has had two games with at least 21 fantasy points. Both were top 10 finishes on the week. One was a top five finish even. And in all three games, he's had at least 58 rushing yards. So like I said, I'd start him just because of that rushing upside that he has that you can't really find anywhere else besides a Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts. And their rushing upside is a little bit different because it's a it's a it's an end zone upside versus Justin Fields is purely just a volume rushing upside type of deal. Bears running backs this week. We saw last week that Deonta Foreman was the lead back. It wasn't Roshan Johnson. It wasn't Khalil Herbert. And I kind of, I'm on the fence about Deonta Foreman this week. Cleveland has been leaky against running backs lately. They're allowing the 11th most fantasy points per game the last four weeks to running backs. But Cleveland has been much better against the run at home than on the road. So, like I said, I'm on the fence about Deonta Foreman. I w- I, if it were up to me, if I had Deonta Foreman, I wouldn't be starting him. But I get that you may be in a spot where your options are pretty limited. You may be looking at Jalen Warren or Deonta Foreman. And I, if you lean Foreman on that, I get I I would understand it. But like I said, if it were my fantasy team, I would try to look elsewhere, and I would hope I have got better options than Deonta Foreman. And the last Bears player then we got to get to is Cole Komet. Um, you got to start him at this point. He's kind of, you know, he's similar to David Njoku in the sense that, you are you know, there are not many viable starting tight ends in fantasy football. And maybe Cole Komet hasn't been doing as well as David Njoku, but over the last two games... He's put up 11 fantasy points. Those are top 10 finishes. I feel like you have to play him just because, again, you've got really no other option at tight end. Now let's get to the Browns players, starting with their running backs and Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. And Jerome Ford has put up double-digit fantasy points in six straight games. And Chicago has been better against the run. They're not the best against the run, though, still. So for me, Jerome Ford, he's a low end to mid running back too because he's got a receiving upside too. And with Joe Flacco as their quarterback, he can cash in on that rush on that receiving upside. And Kareem Hunt, I can't really rely on him this week. We need a touchdown from him because he's really not doing anything else. He's getting like somewhere between eight to 10 touches a game. So maybe he finds the end zone, but even with the touches that he can get, I don't think he makes the most of those touches and a touchdown would would actually 
more so save him than it would, you know, boost him this week, if that makes sense. Then Amari Cooper is the other Browns player I want to talk about. And Chicago has been sneaky tough to wide receivers lately. They're allowing the ninth fewest fantasy points per game over the last four weeks to the position. But Amari Cooper has some kind of upside now with David or sorry, with Joe Flacco as his quarterback. But again, with this matchup, it's not it's not enough upside to complete to make me completely comfortable with Amari Cooper in my lineup as a wide receiver two or something along those lines. I think Amari Cooper is kind of that low end to mid flex kind of wide receiver this week. So I think he's an OK start. Um, but just it's not. Uh, yeah, we saw 14 targets from him last week with Joe Flacco. I don't really see 14 targets again. I see maybe eight. I see maybe nine targets. So four or five catches, something along those lines. I think that's a low end flex for Amari Cooper this week. Last game here before we take a little break and hear from our friends at Underdog Fantasy. We're going to talk about the Falcons taking on the Panthers in Carolina. And there's only one obvious start, in my opinion, at least. And that is Bijan Robinson. Um, his resurgence has been great to see. That's, I think, what a lot of people had hoped we saw since you know at the very beginning of the year. Um, but at least we're getting it now, and it's been great. So, yeah, Bijan Robinson is an obvious start. We need, let's talk about these wide receiver ones. Drake London and Adam Thielen. And I'll be honest, I don't really like either. At least for this week. I don't really like either of them. Uh, Thielen is just not the, the, the PPR machine that he was at the beginning of the year. He's only got nine receptions in his last three games. So that's not great. And they're not really using, you know, they're not utilizing him downfield enough. So he's not getting a ton of yardage on his receptions either. We kind of saw it last week. I mean, he finished, what was it, five for 74. So like it was kind of there, but I, I'm not banking on a big play from Adam Thielen, especially in this Carolina offense. And then Drake London, the other wide receiver one, he finally boomed last week. I mean, he had, he, he was the wide receiver two, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, he he had at least he he had excuse me wow could not get the words out there <laughs> he had ten catches and he had over 170 receiving yards so that was great to see but for me what it comes down to is that if we've learned anything from Arthur Smith this year he's going to run the ball as much as he wants and this Carolina defense will let him run the ball as much as he wants. Because of that, it doesn't make me feel great about the opportunities that Drake London could see. I think we see maybe four, five, six targets, you know, th maybe three catches, 50 yards, something along those lines. I don't think we see a repeat or anything close to what we saw last week. And again, I'm a big fan of Drake London. I have been this entire season and I've gotten, I, I've been made fun of. I've, and, and it, it's been rough. It's been rough being a Drake London stan, and last week was great, but we are about to come back down to earth, in my opinion, this week against the Panthers. And the other player that I want to touch on is Chuba Hubbard, and is like, and as Cam likes to say, he's uh, Chuba Hubbard. Why did I go New York on that? Chuba Hubbard. That's how he likes to say it. Um, for me, Chuba Hubbard is very similar to Zach Moss in the, in the sense that he is just another volume play. Hubbard has gone for at least 87 yards in back-to-back -back games, and he's gotten over 20 touches in those games as well. If I'm not mistaken, he had 25 rushing attempts against Tampa Bay. Then he had 23 rushing attempts this past week with two receptions. So he's gotten 25 touches in back-to-back -back games. And Atlanta has been okay against the run the last four weeks. They're kind of middle of the pack in points allowed. But again, just because of the volume and because of the amount of touches that he's getting, I, I feel a lot better about Chuba Hubbard than I do with a guy like Jerome Ford. Or even I'm, as I look back through the matchups that we've talked about, I feel better about him than Javante Williams. I feel better about Chuba Hubbard than I do about Jalen Warren. Like, I think there is some low to mid running back to, you know, 
production there for Chuba Hubbard because again, 25 touches is an insane amount of work. And uh, I, I hope you notice that I haven't talked about Kyle Pitts at all. And we're not starting Kyle Pitts. We're not, we're not, we're not going there and we're not doing that this week. So, all right, uh, let's take a little break and uh, we're going to hear from our friends over at underdog fantasy. And then we will get back into the rest of our week 15 matchups. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by our friends over at Underdog Fantasy. Now, we love Underdog. It is the easiest place to play best ball formats, and they even have their own form of player props called Pick'em. You can make up to 20 times your money on a single night by correlating props together. Two picks will triple your money, three will six times it, four will ten times it, and five plays that all hit will multiply your entry by 20. You can even place insurance on your picks too, so if only four of your five props hit, you still get ten times your entry. And if you use our code FELLOWS when signing up, Underdog is going to double your first deposit up to $100. Alrighty, we are back. I, I, it was my one chance to do the 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 transition back into the episode, and I, it it wasn't as good as Lucas, and there's a reason why he's always hosting the episodes when we're all together. <laughs> back to these matchups, though. Back to our Week 15 matchups. We're gonna start with Tampa Bay traveling to Green Bay to take on the Packers. Our obvious starts are two Bucks players. It's Rashad White, Mike Evans. I know Mike Evans had a had a very very disappointing week last week against Atlanta, um, but I'm I'm expecting him to bounce back this week, especially with Tampa needing to get back in. I shouldn't say needing because they beat Atlanta. Now they're first in their division, but they need to stay ahead now in the division. So they are in must win football, and I think to win these football games, you gotta you gotta you know, utilize Mike Evans. So I think he is an obvious start this week. Um, Let's talk about these pack with, let's talk about the Packers players before we get to the other Buccaneers player. Excuse me. Um, Audio listeners. You have no idea what that was. (laughs) Apologize for that. But anyway, back to these Packers players, starting with Jordan love who kind of came back down to earth last week against the giants. He did not look good against the giants after looking great in those last three games before that. Um, for me, I, I sneaky like Jordan love this week. Uh, this Tampa Bay defense isn't really slowing down any quarterback. Um, they're allowing the 12th most fantasy points to the position over the last four weeks on a per game basis. Um, like I said, I, I sneaky like Jordan Love this week. I think he's a low end starter, kind of that fringe quarterback one at the lowest um, this week. I think if you're looking for a quarterback, Jordan Love might be a solid option for you. Um, Packers running backs next. We're going to talk Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. Um, Aaron Jones, it it sounded like he was going to be back in Week 14, and then he was ruled out. So it's, in my opinion. It, it it wouldn't surprise me if he is back this week. So I'm kind of I'm 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 anticipating that he is playing. Obviously, if he's not playing, don't play him. Um, but if he plays, I still don't feel great about playing him because it wouldn't surprise me either if the Packers kind of ease him back, ease him back into the mix like they had earlier this year. Um, so again, if it were me, I'd I'd stay away from Aaron Jones and that then leaves AJ Dillon as then kind of the Packers running back to look at this week. Um, But he, AJ Dillon has not really been taking advantage of the opportunities he's had in Aaron Jones's absence. He's been a fringe running back to the last four weeks. He's finished as the running back 24 twice, the running back 25 and the running back 28 in those games like it, it's it's not been great it's that fringe running back two territory <clears throat> and honestly i don't think i would start him either i mean we are we are looking for you know not necessarily guarantees but we're looking for more than just fringe running back twos in our lineups in fantasy playoffs 
So even even without Aaron Jones, even if Aaron Jones plays, I just I he's not getting a start for me, AJ AJ Dillon. So both Packers running backs are actually going to be starts for me this week. And so then we look at the wide receivers. Um, and we should first start off by talking about Christian Watson, uh, because you know, I think a lot of people look to him to be he is the first guy a lot of people think of when you hear Packers wide receiver. And he missed practice on Wednesday after not practicing at all last week. So that's not really a good sign. Again, not practicing on Wednesday after not practicing at all. So if he misses action, if he misses next week, it's the Jaden Reed Romeo Dobbs show. It would take me some convincing to start Romeo Dobbs but I think Jaden Reed is a solid, solid flex play this week. He's averaging nearly 16 fantasy points over his last five games. And he's been doing it. He's been getting it done through the air and on the ground as well. So Jaden Reed, he's, he would be my preference for Packers wide receivers. And I, I feel better about Jaden Reed then I do a guy like Amari Cooper. I feel better about Jaden Reed than a Adam Thielen, a Drake London, a George Pickens, even Deontay Johnson. But that's that I like that tier. I think Jaden Reed clears that by by some bit. And I kind of teased the other Buccaneers player when I first went through Mike Evans and Rashad White. And that's Chris Godwin. And for me, Chris Godwin isn't a start. He's not a start. He hasn't finished higher than the wide receiver 34 in six straight games. And just like I mentioned with AJ Dillon, right? As that fringe running back two, wide receiver 34 finish is a fringe wide receiver three flex play. Like it is just scraping by. And that's not what we're looking for in fantasy playoffs. We are looking for much, you know, again, we're not looking for guarantees, but we are looking for much better players. The players that can give you better results than a fringe starting option, right? So again, he's like an Adam Thielen. He's not the same as he was at the beginning of the year. Just different reasons. Adam Thielen went through a coaching change and all that. Chris Godwin has not had a coach fired on his team, but it's not the same as it was at the beginning of the year. So Chris Godwin, he is a sit for me in this one. Next matchup we got. The New York Jets taking on the Miami Dolphins. And our obvious starts in this one, Raheem Mostert, Tyree Kill, excuse me, as I grab some water because I'm going to get parched here. I can already <laughs> I can already kind of feel like I'm getting parched. So after we talk about this game, we're going to take a quick drink. But um, again, our obvious starts, Raheem Mostert and Tyree Kill, if he plays, um, and then we also look at Brees Hall because of his receiving upside from the running back spot and Garrett Wilson, because again, he's a volume play as well with whoever the quarterback is. Um, but we should talk about two Dolphins players. First is Jalen Waddle. Um, if Tyreek is out, Jalen Waddle is instantly a must start, even in the matchup, right? Going up against the Jets, and they're they're uh pretty locked down secondary. Um Because if it's not Tyreek Hill, then who else is it, right? So uh, Jalen Waddle is in a must start in Tyreek Hill's absence. But if Tyreek Hill plays, I think Jalen Waddle is then like the definition of flex play for this week. I think, you know, you're looking at somewhere between 11 to 15 fantasy points. So that's like low end wide receiver to flex territory than for Jalen Waddle. The other Dolphins player I want to talk about is Devon A. Chan and everybody was super super excited that he was activated off the IR and then he goes to Washington and he gets 17 carries and everyone's like oh he is so back and um that's he's back but he's not like all the way back like people wanted to wanted him to be um, because Raheem Mostert is clearly still the lead back in this in this backfield. You know, HN had 17 carries against Washington, like I said. Most of those came after Miami benched or I, I guess sat their starters because they were up so big on Washington. 
And then this past week, he only had seven carries. I think it was against Tennessee. Like he was not as involved as I think a lot of people wanted him to be. So where does that leave us then with Devon A. Chan? Again, Raheem Moser is the clear lead back in this backfield. So what exactly can Devon A. Chan do at least for this week? And I think he can kind of take advantage of the matchup that he has this week against the Jets because this Jets run defense can be exposed, has been exposed. And if Miami really wants to just utilize the run game, right? And let's say Tyreek Hill misses the game, they could most definitely lean on this running game to get to, you know, actually win this game. They could actually do that. The Jets are allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game the last four weeks. So for me, Devon A. Chan, he's a low end running back too. He's a flex play this week. If you only have, you know, two wide receivers you feel great about and you've got Devon A. Chan, I think he could be your flex. Um, because the thing is like a Chan, he doesn't really have a safe floor, but he's got massive upside in this matchup against the jets. So, so maybe, you know, maybe the best way to say it, he's kind of like a Najee Harris in the sense that like, it is a scary, scary floor, but it's a plus matchup. So like, you might just have to play him. And especially when running backs are kind of few and far between in terms of just, you know, startable running back so again low end running back two flex play i think is about right for devon h hand this week against the jets excuse me here needed that all right um on to another sunday matchup kansas city taking on the new england patriots and what is a game that we are getting about three years too late um, I know we got, I know we got Brady and Mahomes a couple times. We got, we got it once in in Tampa. We got it in the Super Bowl and stuff. I would have loved to see like Dynasty Patriots against this Chiefs, not this specific Chiefs team because this specific Chiefs team is uh kind of kind of dicey. Um, but you know what I mean. I would just love to see another like prime Brady versus prime Mahomes. I can't even say another because Brady was old. But just just picture that with me, I guess. <laughs> this is a disaster. Anyway, obvious starts in this matchup. Mahomes, Rasheed Rice, because dude has been in fuego lately. He has seen at least eight targets in three straight games, I think, at this point. Like he's he's the only pass catcher that Patrick Mahomes trusts outside of Travis Kelsey. And speaking of Travis Kelsey, he is the other uh obvious must start. Um and the only players that we uh, that I really want to discuss in this game are the running back ones because you're not I don't think you're playing any other Patriot player. You know, you're not starting Pop Douglas, you're not starting Devontae Parker, you're not starting Bailey Zappi. It's really, it really is just Ezekiel Elliott, the running back one. And then you could also throw in Isaiah Pacheco. Hence how I got running back ones. Um, let's start with Zeke uh, after his running back one performance last week. Um, this Chiefs defense has been leaky lately to running backs. They're allowing the 12th most fantasy points per game the last four weeks. So that gives me some confidence about Zeke and with the volume he could get, I think he's, he's, I I'm higher on Zeke than I am on guys like Devon A. Chan, Jerome Ford, Jalen Warren, Najee Harris, even and Javante Williams in terms of like comfortability. Um, and again, like he's a volume play again. So he, it's very similar to a Chuba Hubbard, very similar to his Zach Moss. He's just going to get the rock like nonstop in this game. So that, that makes me feel somewhat confident in, in Zeke this week, even in a what would look like a tough matchup uh, for him. And then uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Um, Isaiah Pacheco did not practice on Wednesday after not practicing at all last week, just like Christian Watson. So that's not a great start to the week. Um, and at this point, I would throw in Isaiah Pacheco into that list of names that I mentioned earlier, right? Your Devon A. Chan, Jerome Ford, Najee Harris, all those names. Um, because he's dealing, not only is he dealing with the injury, so, you know, he needs a limited practice on Friday to have any kind of hope to play, but 
the matchup isn't great either for him. The Patriots are allowing an average of just 11 fantasies, uh, fantasy points per game to the position over the last four weeks. Just 11. That's it per game. That's it. It would take me a lot of convincing to start him this week if Isaiah Pacheco plays. And I get you might have to because, again, running backs are just kind of gross this year. But there has got to be some major, major tempering of expectations because the matchup isn't great. And when I say isn't great, it's like the worst possible matchup for a guy like Isaiah Pacheco, who has been so good this year. And as we get into fantasy playoffs, it's just not great timing. So Zeke, I feel I feel pretty good about this week as a volume play. Isaiah Pacheco, not so great. So anyone I missed in that game? I don't think so. No, you're not playing any other Patriots player. So yeah, let's move on. Over to our Houston Texans, Tennessee Titans matchup. And I will be just I will be honest. I don't think there's an obvious start in this game. If there is one, it's maybe, maybe Derrick Henry. And I, I the only reason why I, I say that Derrick Henry isn't a must start is because this isn't the same Texans team that we that we uh, have thought of when we see a Derrick Henry versus Houston Texans matchup, right? Because uh, in, in his last five games, Derrick Henry has gone for at least 100 yards, and in four of those, he's gone for at least 200. But like I said, this isn't the same Texans team. The most rushing yards they've allowed to a running back in a single game over the last four weeks is 62 is 62 and that was in week 11 against the Arizona Cardinals. And I will say this too, just this Tennessee run game is not the same as it has been in the past. So again, that's I I'm being nitpicky here, I guess, when it comes to an obvious start or not debate with Derrick Henry. To me, he's not an obvious start, but you still are going to play him, you are still going to start him. I just don't think we can expect what we've seen historically, you know, against the Texans for Derrick Henry. And the other, the other Texans, or sorry, the other Titans player I want to talk about, DeAndre Hopkins, he scored a touchdown in three of his last four games. But the encouraging sign lately for him is that he has seen 12 targets in back to back games. And now with this matchup against Houston, Houston's allowing the 10th most fantasy points per game to wide receivers out wide the last four weeks. And guess where DeAndre Hopkins lines up most of the time? Yeah, out wide. 80% of the time he is out wide. So with how he has been performing lately, right, finding the end zone and now getting the 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 the, the targets that we want to see, I think he's a low-end wide receiver too, kind of high-end flex player this week he's somewhere in that like wide receiver 22 wide receiver 26 27 range um i i i i am fairly confident in deandre hopkins this week after what we've been seeing and the i i guess i will touch on ty j spears real quick because um he has been the the running back 16 and running back 13 in back-to-back weeks i shouldn't say back-to-back weeks in the last two weeks um but i think those those finishes and those results are more so uh, a result of game script and situation, right? One week you had Derrick Henry leave the game early because he was in concussion protocol. And then the next game, um, he saw eight targets, caught six of them for 89 yards. I don't think that's something you can bank on every single week. Um, and, and that was also because they were playing from behind against Miami. So they're needing to throw the ball. And I think this game against Houston is going to be much, much closer. So I don't, I, again, he has been solid lately, but I don't think we'll see what we've been seeing the last two weeks. We won't see that again this week. And let's get to the Texans players. Um, I can't get a read on these Texans running backs, Devin Singletary, Damian Pierce. I just can't get a read on them. Like two weeks ago, it was Damian Pierce who was the lead back. 
this past week it was Devin Singletary. Um, so really, you know, simple. The simplest way to say this is, if I had to choose one, I would choose neither. Uh, like, if I had to choose one, it would be it would be neither. I can't I can't get a read, and I can't trust these guys, especially as we're going into fantasy playoffs now. And these these wide receivers. No Tank Dell, potentially no Nico Collins. Um, so the only one that I'm really considering at all is Noah Brown. Um, but that's only if CJ Stroud plays because he's dealing with a concussion as well. So if he doesn't play, it's Davis Mills. I don't know, and I don't really I don't really trust Noah Brown with with Davis Mills then. Um I like Noah Brown. I should say it like that. I should say this though. I like Noah Brown with CJ Stroud. I like Noah Brown more than guys like Chris Godwin, Adam Thielen, George Pickens, T. Higgins. Like that again. That that kind of like gross wide receiver tier of guys that you have thought or, you know that have performed in the past that aren't really doing it now. Um, I like Noah Brown more than those guys, but again. That's very dependent on CJ Stroud status. So if CJ Stroud is out, I'm not touching any of the wide receiver, the Texans wide receivers. Um, and Nico Collins, I should give an update on that. They're really, I update isn't the right word, but um, he was ruled out fairly early into the game. I think it was like halftime that he was ruled out with his calf injury. So I, I lean towards him missing this week. So you're down Tank Dell, you're down Nico Collins, and then you're potentially down CJ Stroud. Like I just doesn't feel great, but if CJ Stroud plays, then there's some upside for Noah Brown. Uh, Let's see here. We got about five matchups left and about 15 minutes left. That's some pretty good pace, but I'm going to try not to waste any any more of your time and just get through these. So next matchup we'll, we'll discuss is the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, traveling to Arizona and facing the Cardinals. Um, This one is going to be a pretty short and sweet one as well. Um, Obviously, you're starting all 49ers players. Uh, Brock Purdy, you're starting. Christian McCaffrey, you're starting. Um, Brandon Ayuk, you're starting. Debo Samuel, George Kittle, you're starting. You're starting all the starters. So the only players that we're left to talk about is Kyler Murray, James Connor, Hollywood Brown. Um, Kyler Murray, I I I keep going back and forth on Kyler Murray. Um, San Francisco is kind of middle of the pack, to, you know, bottom towards the bottom half in points allowed to quarterbacks the last four weeks. Um. So, you know, you know, the talent that is Kyler. So I wonder if he's kind of in that like Jordan Love position where he's that low end quarterback one kind of fringe quarterback one. Um, Some of us like myself, uh, maybe in a spot where we have no other option but to play uh, Kyler Murray, you know, and you look at waivers and then you're looking at it at like. Matt Stafford or somebody like that. And you're like, well, at least I get some rushing upside with Kyler Murray. So I think I, I, I guess I lean more so towards play, but I don't feel great about it. Like there, you know, it's kind of one of those, like, I guess I'll play him kind of situations with Kyler. Um, So maybe you've got a better option. Then I would roll with the other, with the better option, but I don't think, Kyler is the one that you need to go actively search for a better situation. If you have it, great. If you don't, then you then you ride with Kyler. James Conner, then. Uh, we're not starting him. <laughs> That's that. Yep, we're not starting him. Not against his Niners defense. Nope, nope, not happening. Then the last one then is uh, Hollywood Brown. And for me, he's a Jalen Waddle-like player this week. He's a uh, flex right? He's the, he's a def, he's the definition of a flex. Um, you know, he's got a lower floor because there is a potential that this game is like, you know, like a 35 to 10 kind of game. And there's just no offense going for Arizona. So that gives him kind of a lower floor, but, um, he doesn't have as high of a ceiling as a Jalen Waddle. So I guess it's not, you know, it's not an exact 
you know, uh, flex comp, I'll get, I, you know, I could say it like that. Um, so Hollywood, I'm not in love with this week, but he may need to be played because what else are the Cardinals going to do if they're not going to be able to run the ball? And again, like you're looking at Hollywood Brown or guys like Adam Thielen, Chris Godwin, T Higgins. I guess like I, I, you know, I would lean Hollywood Brown because there's some kind of garbage time work then I guess for Hollywood Brown. Um, but like I said, with the Niners, you're starting all the starters, Kyler, you, you can play, um, Hollywood Brown, you can play James Connor. You are not playing. Washington taking on the Rams in LA and your one obvious start Kyron Williams, because he is going, he's just getting fed the ball. Like, uh, you know, like Chuba Hubbard has been getting fed the ball. And then it's like Zach Moss and Kyron Williams. Like those guys are the ones that are just getting ridiculous amount of touches. So you're starting Kyron Williams and um, let's stick with the Rams then. St- it's Matt Stafford going up against Washington and Washington's allowing the second most fantasy points per game uh, over the last four weeks. So I guess like, yeah, like Matt Stafford is in that Jordan Love, Kyler Murray tier for me at least because the matchup just screams for fantasy points for him. And if I'm not mistaken, this Rams Washington game is tied for the highest in terms of over under on, on total points. So there's something to be said for this game could be a high scoring game. And you know, the only reason why I would lean like a Jordan love or Kyler Murray over Matt Stafford is just because they've got some rushing upside. Matt Stafford really doesn't, but they're in that kind of fringe quarterback one tier. So I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to hate any kind of got it, you know, I'm I'm absolutely starting Matt Stafford this week. Takes like I completely get it. Um, so then the 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 other side of this, you know, is the Rams pass catchers and Cooper Cup bounced back. Or I shouldn't say bounced back, but he had a phenomenal performance this past week, and that and I feel like a lot of people have been waiting for that kind of performance, and we finally got it. Um. Can we expect that again this week? I I feel like the matchup is there. I, I, just like against quarterbacks, Washington's allowing the second most fantasy points to wide receivers on a per game basis. I don't see why Cooper Cup would not take advantage of this matchup. Just like I don't think Puka, uh, I, I, as just like I think how Puka and Akua can make the most of this matchup. Like I think both Cooper cup and Puka can make the most of the, of this matchup. And I would say that both are kind of steady wide receiver twos. I'm not really, I'm not ready to put Cooper cup back in that like top 12 discussion just yet for the week. Um, but I, I feel confident in saying that both Cooper cup and Puka and Akua are like top 20 guys for me this week. So starting both of those guys. And so then that leaves us with the Washington players. Um, Sam Howell is a start. Uh, the Rams are allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. So I, so maybe that's where your, you know, highest point total on the week of 50 and a half comes into play. Because again, the Rams and Washington are not slowing down quarterbacks at all. Um, so yeah, Sam Howell is a start Washington running backs, Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson. Don't feel great about those guys. I think if Brian Robinson plays, he's playing hurt. So I, and the Rams have been very, very good against the run this year. So I don't feel great about either Washington running back. And then we look at the pass catchers, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Logan Thomas, even like the only one I'm considering is Terry McLaurin. And um, Terry has not been great lately. Uh, He's had no more than nine fantasy points in his last four games. But I think there's some bounce back opportunity here for Terry. Um, the Rams are allowing the eighth most fantasy points over the last four weeks on a per game basis Two wide receivers. So if anything, like I find Terry in that, like Jalen Waddle Hollywood tier, right? Pretty low floor because again, nine fantasy points is what we've been seeing on an, on an average lately from him. Um, so that's a pretty low floor. Um, but the matchup kind of allows him to have some upside and have some decent upside at that. So I think for me, Terry would be a flex. 
Um, but he is not a wide receiver two by any stretch. Uh, last Sunday game before we get to the Sunday night football game and the Monday night football game uh, is probably the matchup for me this week. It's the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Buffalo Bills. Um, you're starting pretty much every Cowboy starter, right? You're starting Dak. You're starting Tony Pollard. You're starting CeeDee Lamb. Uh, and then on the Buffalo side of things, you're starting Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. And I, I, you know, I didn't mention Jake Ferguson for the Cowboys. I didn't mention James Cook for the Bills. I didn't mention Dalton Kincaid for the Bills. I also didn't mention Gabe Davis because I, I refuse to talk about Gabe Davis anymore at this point. I don't play him this week. Um, but like I said, I mentioned both tight ends. So let's take a look at both of those guys. And Dawson Knox was back in week 14 for the Bills. Um, but the encouraging thing was that Dalton Kincaid still played as the tight end one. He got the the line share of routes. Um, so while the receiving produ- the receiving production wasn't the same as it was without Dawson Knox, but it was still kind of there for Dalton Kincaid. And you take a look at this matchup. Both defenses have been pretty stingy against tight ends the last four weeks. Dallas is allowing just eight fantasy points, which I believe is the third lowest. And Buffalo is allowing 8.7, and which I think is like it was just bottom 10 for sure. But again, the over under for this game is 50 and a half, just like the Rams in Washington game. This is tied for the highest. So high scoring game. I kind of lean say Jake Ferg. I kind of lean to say start Jake Ferguson and Dalton Kincaid. Um, because again, like there's points to be had, and that means that there's going to be offense. I would just say temper expectations though, just because again, these defenses have been pretty good against tight ends. Um, so again, high scoring game, there's offense to be had. Just temper the expectations just, just a tad. And uh, the other the other Bills player then that I referred to and didn't mention in the obvious starts is James Cook, um, and I I still think he's a start this week. I don't I, you know obviously it is not that like high end to mid running back two. Maybe he is just a, 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 a you know middle of the pack running back two, maybe low end running back two. But like I said, I think he's a start. You know D- Dallas is tough against the run. We've we've seen that all year long, but. The reason why I I feel optimistic about James Cook is that he's been getting it done through the air lately. He has six receptions and five receptions in his last two games. And I think back to the game against Philadelphia, he finished with 16 carries for 43 yards. And it was like, I mean, that is, I mean, simple, or I should say mental math says that's like two and a half, a little over two and a half yards of carry, right? 32. Yeah, so a little over three, you know, three or two and a half yards of carry. But he had six receptions on seven targets for 57 yards, and he finished with 16 fantasy points. I think we're looking at another 13 to 16 point week from James Cook because, again, he's still involved in the passing game and he's still getting enough rushing volume to give you at least like three, four points in that department. So, yes, James Cook is a start even with this bad matchup against Dallas, just because he remain, you know, he, he stays involved in these bigger games. Like we saw in Philly, like we saw against Kansas city. All right. On to Sunday night football. Now with the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars and obvious starts, Lamar Jackson, Travis Etienne, Evan Ingram. That's, that's really about it. Um, <laughs> We're going to look at the wide receiver ones, though. Take a deeper look into those uh, two players, and we're going to start with Calvin Ridley. And he's come back down to earth uh, quite a bit after his um, his his uh, run of finishing as a top 12 wide receiver where he finished with like 30 points and 20-something points back-to-back games, and uh, it, it's come back down to earth. It's been single-digit points, I think, in his last two games. But I keep coming back to the fact that this Jaguars team does not have Christian Kirk. Um, So Zay Jones is back. And I know that we've speculated to no end. Like, I don't know why Zay Jones makes that much of a difference in this offense. Um, 
but he's back and you there's got to be somebody in this passing game you know to kind of you know shoulder the load a bit i guess and i think that's calvin ridley now moving forward he did see 13 targets against cleveland this past week in week 14 so you know, for me, I, I think Calvin Ridley is kind of that high end flex this week just because of the situation that he's in, right? There's nobody else. It's got it's got to be somebody. And I think Calvin Ridley then is that guy that's going to step up. Then the other wide receiver one, Zay Flowers for the Ravens. Uh, he was a like he was like borderline obvious start. But I did want to just talk about him um, because, yes, he has back to back games with 20 fantasy points or more. Um, but this is like the best possible matchup for a guy like Zay Flowers going up against Jacksonville, who are allowing the fourth most fantasy points per game to wide receivers the last four weeks. They're allowing the fifth most receptions per game, the second highest yards per game to to wide receivers. Like this is a, this is the, the probably one of my favorite wide receiver matchups this week for any one wide receiver. Zay Flowers against this Jacksonville secondary could put up another 20 points and could honestly win you your week and get you going on this playoff race towards your fantasy championship. So Lamar Etienne, Evan Ingram must start. Zay Flowers is a start. Calvin Ridley is a start. Trevor Lawrence. I can't, I can't, I can't really figure out if the knee was bothering him so much. You know, I can't, I can't figure that out. Um, he did, as I pull up his stats here from last week, he did, um, he finished, where did he finish? The quarterback 11, 28 completions, 50 passing attempts with three touchdowns, but he had three picks as well. I guess, I mean, his recent stretch of games, I guess would say that he's a start. Yeah, he's a start. What, who am I kidding? 32, 25, 25, and 20. Yeah, he's a start. He's also a start. Um, it's good to see that he's bounced back. I should say it like this. He's bouncing back at the right time, right? As we're going into fantasy playoffs. Um, so yeah, start him up, fire him up this week as well. And the last game in week 15 is Monday Night Football with the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Seattle Seahawks. And we can keep it pretty sh- uh, short and sweet for Philly players. Uh, you're starting all of them. Uh, DeAndre, uh, sorry. Yeah, DeAndre Swift, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and De- and Dallas Goddard even. I would even, yeah, like, I think this game could also be a pretty high-scoring game. And uh, I want all possible, you know, if I've got an Eagles player, I want to be a part of that game. I want, you know, my guy to be involved. And I think they can be this week against Seattle. So fire up all those Eagles players you've got. Now we get into Seattle and um, let's start with the easier position group of the two between running backs and wide receivers. And that's the running backs. And I'm saying sit them. It's Philly. Need I say more like it, it's it's Philly. Not a great matchup for Kenneth Walker. Not a great matchup for Zach Charbonnet. I don't feel great. Maybe you got to start Kenneth Walker. Um, I. It's not good. Not good for them this week. Um, now we look at these Seattle wide receivers, and uh, we have no idea about Geno Smith. Adam Shafter tweeted out last Saturday evening that Geno is dealing with uh, what is considered to be a two-week injury uh, to his groin, and then Geno went out for uh, pregame warmups before the Niners game and was ruled out. So then it was Drew Locke that came in and um it was yeah, it like it 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 hurts the upside for all those Seahawks wide receivers as soon as Geno Smith was rolled out. So if it's Drew Locke again this week, how the heck do we decide who to start? Of any of these three wide receivers, who who in the world are we going to start? Um, and this, the only way I can really break this down is just by looking at where these, where these receivers were utilized the most against the Niners and DK Metcalf was, was targeted more downfield, you know, further than just the intermediate game. 
and it was Tyler Lockett and, and Jackson Smith and Jigba that kind of ate up then that short and intermediate game. And Drew Luck was much better in those areas of the field than he was down than he was downfield. But he found DK Metcalf uh, for what was it like a thirty something yard touchdown. So again, where what the so again with what we know with Drew Lock, like, ooh, what do we do? And for me, I say we're starting DK and Lockett. Uh, I think both are high end flexes this week. With Lockett being the safer play and DK having the red zone upside, JSN finds himself in that Chris Godwin, Adam Thielen, Drake London, T. Higgins territory where it, you know, his situation is a little bit different. Um, but he's kind of that fringe flex or, you know, really shouldn't be starting just because how much it, how much could he get with this matchup but man this philly matchup is really really nice for for these seahawks wide receivers um philadelphia is allowing the most fantasy points to wide receivers over the last four over the last four weeks excuse me um on a per game basis so the matchup is there for dk and lockett is it there for jsn I think for a deeper league it is, but if you if you're starting your standard two wide receivers and a flex, I don't know if I can necessarily force JSN into my lineup. Then um, maybe unless like you've got no one else, then yeah, for sure, then you can go JSN. But you don't need to force JSN into your lineup, in my opinion. So like I said, I think DK and Tyler Lockett are the two wide receivers to play. I think both are kind of high end flex players. Um, with Lockett being the safer play, probably going to get more uh more receptions than DK, but DK's got the red zone upside. Um, and JSN, if you need him, he can be serviceable, but um, I w- I wouldn't force him into my lineup by any means. That'll do it. <laughs> Every single week, fifteen matchup. Um and discuss all of starts and all those start and sits that we need to know for our matchups and fantasy playoffs. Um, normally we do a fellas fade at the end of this, a little fellas fade segment where we, uh, where we share our two favorite player pick over on underdog fantasy, but um, it's just me. You probably don't need to hear just what my pick is. Um, so again, that just about does it for this matchup. So, um, I guess how does Lucas close these episodes out? Um, follow us on social media, follow us on YouTube and Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get our videos. Um, you know, you get podcasts on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, you get our minute long videos, you get our 10 to 15 minute videos on YouTube. Um, you can also find our minute long content then on platforms like instagram like tiktok um you can follow us on twitter at ff fellas you can follow us on instagram at the ff fellas you can follow us on youtube and tiktok a shout out to all of you guys on tiktok uh at fantasy football fellas i have nailed four of those so far you can follow me on twitter there it is that's the other one you can follow me on twitter or whatever what, or what we call uh x these days you can follow me on x at tyler underscore plath and uh i'm trying to remember if we're going live if we go live on sunday i think we should i think we'll be live on sunday before kickoff so if you didn't listen to this episode or you got friends that would appreciate some advice either share this episode with them or tell them to join our channel on either YouTube or Facebook on Sunday morning, as one of us will go live uh, to answer any last minute start set questions you have. So again, make sure you're subscribed, have the notification bell turned on so you don't miss a single video that we post on any of our platforms. And um, in the words of, of Lucas, stay safe, stay healthy. And in the words of Cameron, uh, keep fighting the good fight. That's the Fantasy Football Fellas podcast for you. We will see you next week uh, on Monday, which is going to be my video on waivers. 
And then we will be back on Tuesday with another episode of the Amazing Football Fellows Podcast. So until then, deuces. <laughs>